Hi, boys and girls, and welcome to Radio Succotash Part 2. Radio Succotash is where you get all that flavor radio without that lima bean and corn aftertaste. So, um, first time we did it, I thought it was a lot of fun, and I figured it was just time to time to make a second one. Now, there's going to be four parts to this Radio Succotash, and uh, Part 1, we're going to refuse some... Uh, some radio uh, station birthdays that uh, I haven't uh, had a chance to do in other videos. Second part is we're going to have some radio and electronics news, uh, including some commercials that are a little bit offbeat and some old commercials. So uh, we'll, 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 we'll touch base with that. Also, uh, I've gotten at some emails, part three, I've gotten some emails about Berwyn and people were asking me, what's up with Berwyn? How's Berwyn doing? So we'll, we'll do a little video on that. And uh, part four is basically going to be uh, local events, swap meets, and things like that coming up. We have an auction coming up next month. So I'll re be reviewing all that. So if you want to skip out after part three, if you're not going to be, uh, you know, if you, if you live in Alaska and it's not feasible to get to New Jersey uh, in, in for the first couple weeks of April, then you could bail after number three. But uh, Please like and subscribe if you haven't already, and uh, give me a thumbs up, okay? And that'd be uh, helpful for me, and uh, kind of reimburses my wallet for this, this itty-bitty bit of time here. So, anyway, let's get started. You gotta be kidding. These CAPTCHAs are just getting... CAPTCHAs are getting worse and worse and worse. You know, whatever happened to I'm not a human, and just move on from there. All right, so let's get on with it. Part one, radio history uh, stuff going on. That That's going to consist of a couple birthdays of a couple of uh, New York area radio stations. One is WOR. Uh, these days you know it, might know it uh, from your maybe your DXing is uh, 710 on their AM broadcast dial out of New York. Uh, they actually got started on February 22nd, 1922. So that was actually their 100th birthday. Uh, WOR is uh, kind of uh, interesting. They uh, they got started in Newark, New Jersey, and it was done in 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 the uh, Bamberger's building. Now Bamberger's was uh, kind of your equivalent to uh, say Macy's or whatever. Actually, they were in competition with each other uh, in New York City for a number of years. Bamberger's actually had uh, went to New York City as well, and uh, they they were in competition with each other. So WOR was in the Bamberger's building in Newark, and it's actually still there today. Here's a couple uh, shots here from uh, <laughs> this. This is, of course, if you ever got into your G Maps or uh, from Google or Google Maps, uh, you can see there. They, they have, there's actually I think a 7-Eleven, a dollar store, and a parking deck in there nowadays. So uh, the the building is now uh, certainly a lot changed from when it was uh, being used as a radio station. So uh, they, they, they do have uh, some history in respect that they started out doing uh, a lot of different radio programs, uh, which included uh, later on years, uh, maybe if you're from New York area, you remember, uh, uh, I think three or four generations of rambling with gambling, uh, gambling family uh, that had their own programs for a long time. And uh, what, I, what sticks in my mind mostly was uh, Gene Shepard and his nighttime radio programming, which I used to listen to on my my Viscount transistor radio at night, hidden carefully under my pillow so my parents wouldn't hear me listening to him when I was actually supposed to be sleeping. So, hey, happy birthday, WOR. And the second radio birthday, the second one here, another New York radio station. Um, but it, it actually has humble beginnings. It, the radio station started out at its... WJZ, also in Newark, New Jersey. Uh, they actually, now, now they're, they're also celebrating a 100th birthday, but they actually got their start in 1921. And I think at that time, from my research, they did a lot of experimental broadcasts before they went into trying to be a serious broadcast station in, uh, in 1922. And I don't really have a date as to when that happened, but... Uh, We'll just consider it a birthday since we're well on the march anyway. So happy 100th birthday, uh, WJZ, which later became WABC. 
So I actually, uh, another thing that they did was uh, when they got started, they were doing a lot of bouncing around. They, they started out at 833 kilocycles. You know, that, that was just unheard of nowadays, of course, but that was, a, you know, kind of an experimental stage back then. And they were in Newark, New Jersey as well. A um, couple years later, in 1923, uh, they went to uh, 660 kilohertz on the dial. And they left Newark for New York City in 1928. And also, well, actually, they also changed the frequency too to 760 KCs. And then uh, the, the, the transmitter in 1935 moved to Bound Brook, New Jersey, which is only about, about 12 minutes from where I live here in Donnell, New Jersey. Um, and then just before World War II got, well, actually right around when World War II got fired up, right around 1941, they moved to 770 and uh, became a clear channel station. And uh, I, I'm, I'm trying to remember, I, I think that they went to WABC. Um, I don't remember the date on that, but that was also, I think, in the third, no, it was probably in the 40s. It was, that was after the war. They went to 770. Remember, maybe that was right around the... No, it was 1941. I'm sorry. Let me paraphrase it. I have, I have to look at my crib notes here because I can't remember all this. But 19, 1941 is when they went to 770, which is where it's out now. Um, for those of you that do a lot of nighttime DXing, especially maybe in the uh, the southern USA states, it can be on parts of eastern Canada and maybe as far west as uh, Chicago, Iowa, St. Louis, or whatever, um, you notice that the 770 signal of all the, the, the clear channel New York stations seem to come in the clearest. And I've actually confirmed that myself from when I was traveling. Um, the, I actually spoke to a couple people, one that was a serious uh, broadcast engineer, and, and he had told me before he passed away that WABC to this day is the only clear channel station that uses a full half-wave antenna tower. And that's one of the reasons why that the, the signal is so strong as compared to, say, uh, maybe WCBS 880 or uh, WOR. So happy birthday, WABC, as well. Okay, now I want to move into uh, some news, some radio-related electronics-related news. And uh, this is this is real news. This is not something I'm making up, but this is a true thing, and you can fact check this and go on the web and look at it for yourself. A farmer in Turkey a month or so ago uh, was a he was a dairy farmer and had decided to take one of his cows and fit it with a virtual reality headset, and you can see the illustration here of the cow wearing the headset now. <laughs> Why would you do that? I mean, I don't even own a virtual reality headset. If you do own one, uh, you're probably a gamer, okay? But why would you do this to a cow? Well, the mindset of the farmer was he wanted to do this so that the cow could, you know, see in the virtual reality, like, pastures and raised farm, like, because the cow was basically in a barn 24-7. It didn't travel or go around or do anything. So the thought was is that if he got the impression that he was actually outdoors and seeing things or whatever like that, it might output more milk. That was the idea. So, you know, leave it to a Turkish farmer to use modern technology to uh, increase milk production. Now, I don't know if it actually did or didn't, but uh, it's, it's really uh, a true story. So anyway, commercials. That <laughs> Next, uh, I want to go over a couple things. I've received emails from a few people asking me, and maybe some of you are curious, some of you aren't, but asking me about our, our pet, Berwin, the, the analog wonder cat, and what he's been up to. Well, 
Berwin's getting up there now. He's four years old. He's a full-blown male, male cat, and uh, you know we, we we get him to the vet and you know make sure he's been you know vaccinated fully and he's healthy and he's happy and uh, you know, just a great cat. Now you can see this picture here. He's he likes to like if you look at this chair right here, you can see how it's got a back to it. So what I'll be doing here is I'm as I'm facing my workbench right here is where I got the camera and tripod mild right now as I as I speak to you. I can be working on something, radio or mostly radios. He'll jump up on the chair and sneak up just like you see here in this picture here. He just kinda that's why I have like the like wacky face, you know, like it's not flattering for me, but uh <laughs> that's what my wife says, but I just grab my, my, my cell phone camera and just got a quick pop. And that's what he'll do. He'll just kind of sneak down here sometimes and just, it just scares me. I just, like, I'm, I'm focused. I'm trying to work and, you know, all of a sudden he'll just sneak up on me like that. So, um, he likes to go out and play around the yard. Now the warmer weather is coming around. He likes to go out in the yard. And then sometimes about, you know, maybe once a week, usually on a Saturday night when, uh, uh, Mrs. R.W. and I, we like to watch Sven Gulli on me TV, so we like to watch those really bad old movies. So what we do is, once a week, as a treat for ourselves, we break out some ice cream. And if you see this picture here, Bern, Berwin's just a member of the family. So what he likes to do is, uh, after we're done with our ice cream, he likes to get in there and lick the bowl. And uh, this is what you see him doing right now. So... Uh, so Berwin right now he's upstairs sleeping as I'm I'm making this video, so I don't want to disturb him. But I'm sure a couple hours from now he'll probably start running around the house and uh we we like to call it doing zoomies. He just like uh he'll go in the litter box and then after he uses the litter box he does zoomies, he just runs around the house and just acts like a lunatic. So uh you know, that's just just kind of fun and uh He's, he's just uh, another member member of the Radio Wild family, just as you are watching me right now. First off, April the 2nd, the New Jersey Antique Radio Club is having our spring swap meet and ham fest. And this is going to be at the New Jersey uh, Parsippany PAL building. And as you see here on the flyer, there is an address there. You can, if you have a... Uh, uh, navigation in your car or if you have a detachable uh, unit like I have just pop that in there pop in the address and you will be able to find us so uh, hopefully if there's something uh, you want to do in the spring and get out there and drive around a little bit I know gas is expensive right now but uh, if you want to just uh, kind of take a break from life and you want to go see some old cool stuff for sale hey who knows maybe something will follow you home stop by and I will be there with uh, got tubes <laughs> so if you're looking if you're looking for some reasonably priced good tubes you'd be more than welcome to visit me or there's also other people there that sell tubes and there's other people that sell parts and all kinds of stuff so uh it'll be a good time for sure and then last but not least um on saturday august the 9th okay i have uh two acquaintances um that that uh uh, their names are John and Darren. And just before the pandemic hit, they decided to uh, start piecing together uh, an auction service. Okay, so even though that, you know, the, the pandemic probably took away a lot of jobs, maybe unfortunately you could have lost your job. Um, fortunately, uh, my, my wife got through her job okay. Um, but uh, they started this auction company and uh, we did, we've already had a radio auction and there's going to be a set that was in January now there's going to be a second one now April Saturday April 9th and uh, you'll see the address I have the flyer up there so you can uh, you know again you can plunk that into your uh, GPS and come down and see us um, I will be there uh, if you want to come by and say hi and uh, it should be a whole lot of fun and uh, as Darren would say, it, 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 this is not a cliche, but there will be something there for everybody. There's going to be, um, there'll be ham gear. There's going to be some bone anchor receivers. I've actually seen some of the things already, and there's some nice, nice pieces in the auction. Matter of fact, if you go back to my video uh, from from uh, a few weeks back where I showed you the RCA Victor clock sign, 
Okay, I'll show that to you again at the end of the video as I put up the credits. I picked that up at the auction. Tubes, hi-fi gear, I mean, you name it, there's something there for real. ham stuff. It'll be a real, it'll be a good time. Uh, not as many pieces as there were in the first auction, but still, there's a lot of nice, nice stuff. So, um, you can go there, there's a website there that's in the flyer. Go check them out, and uh, hopefully we'll see you there uh, April 9th. So, uh, anyhow, that's pretty much it. I hope you uh, enjoyed the video. And, uh, by the way, thank you for stopping by. I mean, uh, I like to do these. These are fun, and I try to do as many as I can, but sometimes I have these time constraints. I'm finding now in retirement I'm, I'm, I'm busier than I was uh, than when I was working. So, And uh, it just uh, I'm, I'm not going to explain it, but if you're retired, maybe you get it. So thanks for stopping by, and uh, take care, and hope to see you really soon. Bye-bye. Real joy of good living. Move up to quality. Move up to Schlitz. Move up to Schlitz. The beer that made Milwaukee famous.